Heaven's Vault's big selling point is that it lets you step into the shoes of an archaeologist. No, not that kind of archaeologist, an actual scientist that specializes in studying past artifacts and ruins and doesn't carry a gun to shoot Nazis with. There's no combat to speak of in Heaven's Vault, but there is a lot of rooting through the ruins of ancient space empires. The big mechanical loop is trying to translate ancient hieroglyphs from a dead language. Suffice to say, that's pretty unique. But honestly, it was the least of what Heaven's Vault does right, which I think is a lot. As always, I'm Alex, and this is First Five, where I ask if games are worth your time, not your money. I played a game for five hours, and I'm going to tell you if those were five hours well spent. And today, we're investigating the past in Heaven's Vault. As you might expect, there's a lot of blindly groping around involved in figuring out Heaven's Vault's hieroglyphic dead language. Already, the list of words has spiraled into a larger one than I can keep straight off the top of my head, and that's not figuring in the fact that I'm not even sure half these words mean what I think they mean. Some of them are straight-up random guesses. Normally, this would be a Herculean task of translation that would require dozens of tenured professors and decades of work, so Heaven's Vault has its work cut out for itself, making it all manageable for one layman like me. Luckily, there are a lot of ways that Heaven's Vault holds your woefully uneducated hand. To start with, you only get a few options to pick from for any given word. It's kind of like playing Mad Libs, except every word is a blank, and you're filling each blank in with educated guesses because that word has a funny swirl in it you recognize. After a phrase has come up a few times, however, the game will tell you whether your shots in the dark are on the right track or not, which is an absolute godsend that I wouldn't ever get anywhere without. Whenever you come across a new word, the game also shows you passwords you found with similar symbols in them, which aside from the context of where you found an inscription, are the best clues you're going to find. And there's also always Huang, a scholar you can visit at your home base to bounce theories against. Sometimes he even figures out his own words or can tell you when you're erring in a translation. And all of that is super heckin' unique. It's all understandably a little overwhelming to parse, but it's still fun and engaging to try and muddle your way through, and you're definitely not going to see anything like this in another game. But there's one small problem. As of yet, beyond being thematically connected, translating ancient languages is an activity largely divorced from the rest of the game. Instead, you're much more preoccupied with following the trail of one Janiki Renba, who's gone missing after sending a crystal from an ancient empire back home, and the game's dual primary narrative thrusts follow you uncovering what happened to Renba while also slowly unraveling what happened to the ancient empire he was investigating. Along the way, you spend a lot of time translating words from various civilizations that came before, but the plot would be progressing just as smoothly if I never translated a single word correctly. And mechanically, you'll be spending just as much, if not more time, walking around the game's many environments looking for clues. Rarely, if ever, do the little scribbles on the stuff you find have any real bearing on the game, and they start feeling more like a side activity than the main draw. This may be for the best, however, as it's easy to quickly become incredibly lost dealing with something as difficult and complicated as learning a dead language with basically two words to start going off of. This was going to be a confusing and unwieldy endeavor under the best of circumstances, and having something else to hang on to as I try to muddle through it is probably a good thing. And seeing as I'm still figuring out small three-word phrases and couldn't even venture to attempt a full sentence, or heaven forbid, a paragraph, it might be a little unreasonable of me to expect a ton of meaning from the phrases I'm translating. I can see the decision to keep the translations largely divorced from the rest of the game as being a smart one. Though, of course, there's still room for them to become more important as time goes on and I learn more words. But even if the adventures and translation haven't quite synced up with everything else, that's not to say that Heaven's Vault is a bad game. Far from it. That everything else is really strong, perhaps even stronger than the game's main hook. And there is so much to enjoy here. As one might expect, the mystery of what happened to the empires that have come before is a rich and compelling one to unravel, but Heaven's Vault is also just as interested in the culture the main character, Aaliyah, is currently living in. For every ancient house Aaliyah digs through, she'll have an equally in-depth philosophical conversation about the nature of this universe's religion back at home. It's incredibly rare that I see a video game with a world that feels as lived in and real as what most novels produce, but playing through Heaven's Vault feels like dipping into an Anne Leckie book. 
and that's not idle praise. Heaven's Vault's writing and world building are easily its strongest points, and honestly, it's what you should come to this game for. The way the game's broken up is also interesting. It's got this branching narrative that allows you to tackle individual levels in any order you want. About two hours in, the game starts expanding, usually giving you three different missions you could be following at any given time in your search for answers. And the game handles all the subtle shifts in the order of events remarkably well, with only a few occasional points where it felt like I was able to see behind the curtain. The game also takes a different approach to dialogue. While sometimes you'll get to sit down and have a conversation with ABC dialogue choices, a majority of the time you'll have two options, question or comment. It's straightforward, but certainly unorthodox, since you never really quite know what's going to come out of Aaliyah's mouth when all you know is it's going to be a declarative statement of some sort. But for me, that was mostly okay, since Aaliyah very much feels more like her own character than an audience insert. Even so, this might seem like a bad idea at first glance, but then you realize just how much empty space Heaven's Vault has. Walking around environments is slow, clunky, and has a lot of random little transitions as you move from screen to screen. And then there's this whole thing where you sail around the nebula to get from place to place. Sailing the nebula is... well, it's freaking beautiful, but its charm wears thin after the fifth or sixth time you spend five minutes looking at roadmaps while waiting to get to your destination. But it's clear that the devs were well aware of that fact, as they do everything they can to try and fill said empty space the primary method of which being these simple two-option conversations. Aaliyah travels the universe with a robot companion that's been foisted on her that she's dubbed Six, and the two engage in a frankly staggering amount of banter that's been written to fill these in-between moments when you're just waiting to get to the next thing. They almost never run out of things to say. Even more surprising is the fact that very little of it feels like throwaway filler, and instead these moments are aptly tooled to give us a better sense of our leading two characters, from their philosophical talks when going about the nebula, to their more personal and quippy dynamic when out exploring. Thankfully, these constant conversations are enough to save these travel sections from feeling like padding, as they've been some of the most interesting in the entire game. But we've taken a considerable amount of time describing all the different stuff happening in this game, so it's time to tie it all together. What do you get out of five hours with Heaven's Vault? Well, I can't say I've gotten the full experience. Because of how heavily it leans on its story, Heaven's Vault isn't really one you can just play halfway. And after five hours, that's where I am, halfway at best. That said, what I have experienced has been pretty enjoyable, and it only really took me about an hour to get invested in the game. Heaven's Vault is masterful at tone, world building, and storytelling, and it's got a gorgeous art style to boot, so there's definitely a lot to appreciate here if you've got more than just five hours to spend with it. If you can't commit to playing all the way through, you might want to look elsewhere, but if you're looking for a game that puts you in an unusual pair of shoes, gives you a unique activity to pursue, or just has a fascinating story to tell, it's definitely worth the look. But hey, maybe you want to sail a different kind of sky, in which case, Sunless Skies might be up your alley. Or if you're eager for more narrative-heavy games that let you be something other than a tough and gruff soldier, maybe check out what I had to say about We the Revolution. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this first five review. If you did, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. If you're looking for games that value your time and don't pad themselves, I'm your guy. Thanks for watching this far, and I'll see you all next week.